there are some policies that will only reimburse the insured for products that have been sold, not products that are still in the possession of the insured. Uh, as you can see, this can easily create a large uninsured loss. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the expectations of my clients, I know that they would expect to be paid for all of the contaminated goods. So really, these types of policy forms, if you don't know the policy language, your expectations are not going to be met at the time of loss, and you can be in a very, very uh, sticky situation. Um, so what I'm saying is there is coverage available out there in the marketplace for both sold and unsold goods. Well, Michael, can I break in here for just a second? I think that's sure. a critical point because a lot of my clients will send out their products in lots, and one item will be contaminated, and then they'll have lots and lots of their products unsold. And they Correct. are under this misconception. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying, Andy. And and really, you know, when, when a company thinks about a recall, they're always thinking about, oh, I have to recover all this product from the stream of commerce. I have to, you know, recover all this product from my customers. My customers are going to be angry. But at the same time, you're sitting on product that's still in your possession that, that could, you know, if you lose that product, can, it can financially be devastating to a company. Um, so you have to look at the entire risk and you have to make sure that you're covered for the entire risk. Fascinating. So you and I had chatted about coverage triggers. What are those? Uh, well, well, coverage triggers, um, as an example, uh, and it really goes by policy forms, uh, but a coverage trigger would be any situation that could possibly lead to a class one recall. Um, so any situation where uh, there's the potential for uh, bodily injury, um, that, that's, a, that's an example of a co coverage trigger. Uh, but once again, some policies stipulate that either the insured must prove that the product is actually contaminated, um, otherwise they don't have coverage, while some policies stipulate that the product may be contaminated. Uh, as you know, Andy, there's been, uh, there's been some recall scenarios in the food industry over the past couple of years where companies have suffered even when their product has not necessarily been contaminated, but they've been roped into uh, a recall scenario where, where they're losing sales because... Uh, because there, there, you know, there's press out there that their product may be contaminated. Um, so that's an example of a coverage trigger. So, so you had mentioned before that there are differences in other types of areas in your policies, like what do you say, limits and how they're applied and other things. Sure. Yeah. I mean, beyond beyond the issues of coverage triggers and and what types of goods are covered. Uh, like we spoke about before, how sometimes uh, some policies will only cover sold goods and some policy will, policies will cover sold and unsold goods. Uh, there's there's many, of other, uh, many other differences between policy forms, such as limits, uh, like you said, limits and how they're applied. Um, there's also difference, there's differences in the warranties and the conditions that must be met by the insured in order for coverage to exist. Um, there's limitations, uh, policy limitations, uh, that are different one form to another. There are a number of exclusions uh, that are different from one form to another. Um, and also, even during the application process, uh, there are differences from one insurer to another. Um, for example, there are some insurance companies out there that will make you list your products, and you're only going to be covered for those products that are named on that list. So if I have a client who is selling apples and only apples um, and they name that on the application and then six months down the road they decide to uh, sell bananas and they forget to mention that to the insurance company there's no coverage for the bananas uh, while, while some um, some insurers will, will make uh, some room for error there so that's an example of, of another difference well, it, it certainly leads to the conclusion that the, these, my clients, the food producers, really need to keep in touch with their insurance broker and 
really keep an eye on their policies and, and read every comma and every period and every may and shalls. Hey, I wanted to cover one issue in the minutes remaining. Sure. You had chatted with me earlier about a $5,000 credit from their insurance premium for a mockery call exercise. Can you w- walk us through that real quick? Sure. Uh, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, even today on this phone call, uh, you know, we've dissolved, we've, we here at Capital Risk, we've developed a number of, of programs and policies that are exclusive to our clients in the food industry. And we've even gone outside of the, uh, I guess, the, the insurance contract to even, you know, try to bring more value to our clients. Uh, and one thing we noticed that our clients were struggling with is to actually construct a well-designed, uh, effective recall plan, uh, a, a plan that really needs to be understood by everyone within uh, an organization. Um, so what we did, we went to some of our insurers that we use for product recall, product contamination insurance, and we asked them if they would be willing to give our clients uh, not a premium reduction, but a premium credit to go towards the expenses of bringing in an outside consultant who is well-versed in creating uh, recall plans to help our clients create a highly effective uh, written recall plan. Um, one may ask, why would an insurance company like this? Uh, why would they get on, get on this, this wagon? Why would they want to pay for this? Well, in the end, it really makes the risk a lot better. Uh, and ins- our insurers, they recognize that if one of our clients had a recall event or contamination event, that if they had a highly functioning, uh, you know, well-oiled uh, recall plan, that the potential impact of that recall would be a lot less. Uh, they would have people, you know, our clients would understand what to say and what to do the moment they had to recall a recall product, and that could really help with, uh, with minimizing the overall effects of that loss from a, from a financial perspective. So we have... We have an agreement with our insurers that if a client purchases a policy, that 10% of the of the premium, up to a maximum of $5,000, will go towards bringing in an outside consultant to help our clients in constructing these recall plans. And quite frankly, Andy, these recall plans, it's something that a company must have in place, especially with uh, the Food Safety Modernization Act. Wow, Michael. You know, I really learned quite a bit. And in the last few remaining minutes, I, and we have about two, by the way, I was wondering if you could just review CAP in your own words, Michael, the programs and the special offerings that Capital Risk Concepts and your experience offers for food producers and, and kind of a going comment in this. Really, a lot of my clients are in a state of crisis looking at recalls and outbreaks. Sure. Um, well, once again, I, I, I think the... The one thing that we really offer to our clients in the food industry, and I'll keep it focused since we're on the topic, I'll keep it focused on the issue of product recall and product contamination. Uh, we have an understanding of, of what food companies are up against. Uh, we, we understand the food safety laws. Um, it's, not, it's not that we just understand insurance. Um, we understand how insurance will uh, or can and cannot respond to a certain event. So we can help our clients to insure for everything that's possibly insured against, and even in situations where insurance is not uh, is not available, we can we can help our clients mitigate that loss. Uh, this is from years of of expertise in the in the food industry. Um, and in closing, I would say that yes, uh, the food industry, many businesses out there in the food industry. Uh, they are in a state of crisis, um, you know. But but there are solutions out there. There are there are people out there who can help, such as yourself, Andy. Um, and you know, I, I have to say that do I do I do I think everyone is prepared for a recall event? Um, some companies are. Some company, companies have taken the right steps, but there's many out there that that are not. Uh, and I'm not talking about having an insurance policy in place. Uh, I don't think insurance is necessary for every company. Uh, many companies risks, 
uh, understanding the risks, understanding the potential impacts, and they've made the decision to self-insure, and that's okay. Um, but what so I Michael, find... I hate to cut into you, but I do have to let you know that our time has expired. I appreciate and thank you for participating in this program today. I know our clients Great. will really appreciate the counsel. Thank no you, problem. Sir.